on the table. How many of these Five Nights at Freddy's guys have we opened over the years? There's quite the many, all staring at me. Well, that's, that's great. Hey everyone, this is Dan. You are watching Squirrel Stampede and we are going to take a look at the curse of Dreadbear today. And uh, just letting you know I might have a slight fever. And that's why this video is a little bit off today, but I really wanted to share these. I've been not in the office for most of the week, not in the studio, and I really wanted to be in the studio today. Might be the fever. I just kind of ran up here. <laughs> but look at these. Look at these guys. Everyone's here gathered to see the Curse of Dreadbear, which has been out a little while now. It just took me a while to finally find all of the curses. There they are. So anyhow, bear with me. Bear with me. Get it? Oh gosh. That's bad. <laughs> Let's just start opening them. And, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what I said there. Let's just start opening these <laughs> and be cursed by Dreadbear. Squirrel Stampede! 2022! Please like And a squirrel live! So let's start with Dreadbear here. Curse of Dreadbear Funko, Five Nights at Freddy's. Now these, I believe, were first released 2021 in October, but I did not find my full set until about late December. Discovering them both at a Walmart and a Target. I think I found most at the Walmart, but then the glitch trap at Target. So there's five to collect. And just a little tricky to find them, not everywhere available. And Funko is continuing on with the same design with these, which is kind of unfortunate. I've kind of changed my thinking of these over the years as they become weakened. I think this is Rockstar Freddy here. Rockstar, I just busted his elbow joint. Oh no! Yeah, I think it has that black sparkly plastic, which is often a very brittle plastic. These toys are really hardly meant for play. They're best left in the package, but I always open these, so I have to continue opening. So let's get Dreadbear out, check out the next level of Freddy out of the box. And out of the box, Dreadbear already falling apart. At least when these are brand new, they uh, the plastic's a little better off, and they shouldn't break, hopefully. I don't see too much improvement over these tiny, tiny ball joints. Usually where the breakage occurs is you've got such a small little enclosure here, concave enclosure, that when it tries to capture the ball joint, it just cracks. It's kind of sad that these have been out for so long and they never really kind of addressed that issue because otherwise they're really terrific sculpted figures. They always look fantastically freaky. They do such a wonderful design with the heads and the torsos. Just those arms and legs, the way they attach, always kind of very weak. So Dreadbear, kind of this Frankenstein's monster of Five Nights at Freddy's, very Halloween themed with this one. And I think his arms are on the wrong sides. Let's switch that up real quick. There is certainly some fun mix and match abilities with these. You just have to be so fragilely careful with these joints. You do not want to punish them too much or they may crack on you. This is a nice addition to the Freddy collection though. I, is that the first one? It's so hard to tell now. There's a neon Freddy sister location Freddy who may just fall down super weak joints on the knees. A glam rock Freddy here. So, so many designs of Freddy over the years. We can check back on that in a little bit. I like quite a bit what they did with this one, especially with the uh, spine being very visible in some of these. So that is Dreadbear. Usually we go with Bonnie or Chica next. So we'll go with Jacko Bonnie. Jacko Bonnie with the theme of a Jacko lantern. Pretty simple. I like when they can use transparency in the figures. That's not very used often, so that's gonna look kinda cool. Let's open up. And Jacko Bonnie out. Really fantastic head sculpt with this one. It is just putrid the way it's kinda decaying around the eye there. And great paintwork and the transparency of the body. 
Really standing out. Nicely done with this one. No accessories with these. I wish we had accessories. Something. It's always nice to try and have them hold on to something, which they usually drop. I always like what they can do with Bonnie. If I could just collect Bonnie, I think that's the one character I would just collect. Let's do a quick mix and match with these. We'll stress the plastic a little bit and see if it holds. I don't know why I've never really mixed and matched my figures like these before. I guess I was worried about breaking them. So that's kind of a fun extra feature. Oh, nice to meet you. They're friends now. What? Things you say when you have a cold, right? So let's keep it with the old school and go right to Grim Foxy. Let's try and keep everyone from the old stage going first here. Although most of these characters have been around forever. Grim Foxy. Grim Foxy kind of looking like a weathered, burned Foxy. I don't know, what would you say? Let's open up. You definitely don't open these right if an arm or leg doesn't fall off of these. So there's Grim Foxy, also nice with a transparent torso uh, in the plastic there, translucent, orange, kind of burny, lots of metal exposed, trying to find some other Foxies to compare and play with. There's an arm missing on that one, it's somewhere deep in the collection. Maybe this one here would be a nice close match. There's always just a little fun variation to these that make them so fun to collect. That exposed spine on these, I really like that. Not really articulated there, but articulated pretty much everywhere else. Oh, let's get his arm on. So this Foxy working the classic hook which makes this arm on the wrong side, I believe. There, that's closer. Where is the arm? Where did it go? I have the collection so carefully placed in a bin so that everything is nicely in order. Uh, uh, what? What? Okay. I guess you're gonna use that arm, Foxy. Is that the... I forgot who that guy was. Well, that worked out well. You got one arm on and the other arm fell off. It's totally one of these days. Okay, well, while we have Grim Foxy out, let's look at the other version of Foxy, Captain Foxy, which is a Walmart exclusive. And usually when it comes to these type of exclusives, you'll just see like a hundred pegs full of them, like they over-ordered. Not on the back here on the card, but on the front here to look at. Captain Foxy. And this one's kind of cool. I like this one a lot just because of the full theme of the captain suit on Foxy here. Let's open up. It's funny. I said Bonnie was a character I like to overcollect, but I think actually what I meant to say was Foxy. I actually like to overcollect Foxy now. Uh, so there, what a great figure to look at. That full coat is a really nice piece and looks so different with these, because usually the way they're built, you don't really have a full coat molding into the legs like so, and it just looks a lot of fun. The coat is a pretty heavy plastic, actually. I thought it was going to be a softer mold. And then we got the traditional pants and uh, knees down there. Can we, give, can we have him doing a salute? I don't know why I want to see him doing a salute. Uh, I don't think we can because of those shoulders. That's kind of a more inappropriate salute there. Uh, but we've got the classic hook hand, and just a great looking Foxy. So if you're looking for this only at Walmart, a Walmart exclusive uh, for your Foxy collecting needs. And that brings us to the final figure of this series, unless there's something I've probably missed. There's always maybe a GameStop option or something. Glitch Trap! Really creepy version of Glitch Trap, if not any version was ever not creepy. Let's get Glitch Trap out. Again, one of the harder ones to find that I had to look for in these five. Well, certainly not creepy at all. A, a perfect figure to give to Grandma for her uh, uh, Easter surprise. Something you could hide behind at the knick-knack table. 
My goodness, the smile on this one. Did we not, like, build a bear, build a glitch trap sometime before? I think we may have, and I found this, and it is, like, almost falling apart. Nothing's broken, just nothing really fits in the joints anymore. This, this just doesn't fit. Oh, gosh. So definitely some glitch there. But fills out the collection nicely. Purple bow tie vest. Just the weathered look on the outer plush. Really creepy. So there is your Dread Bear collection. I, again, now that I'm seeing the weakness of these toys uh, just being left in a box nicely sealed for a while, I tried my best to keep these good, but they're just falling apart, so they're really meant to stay in box. The more I think about it, to stay in package if you're collecting these, because they're just going to fall apart, sadly, and you lose a little bit of their uh, scariness, the way they look in package. It's up to you. You're careful, you may not break them, but you probably will. And the mixing and matching is just, you know, causing more trouble than it's worth right now. I'm worried I'm gonna break them even more. But they look so great together. I mean, it's such a weird series from Funko. They do such a fantastic job of giving you these just creepy sculpty figures, but then they just weather and wear apart. I suppose you just have to be nice to Dreadbear, right? No. Ah! And there we go with Curse of Dreadbear from Funko. Another fun series to add to your Five Nights at Freddy's Funko ball jointed breaking action figures. If you liked today's video, please give us a squeak, a score live, and a squamit. What is your favorite Five Nights at Freddy's character? Thank you so much for watching. That's what I have to say about that.